So, the previous two days, I was working on this video, which you're about to see, which explains Prometheus, and I thought it would be cool to add some clips from Prometheus. But Fox decided to be Fox and ban things that at worst would make them money, and it was blocked. So, I had to remake it, but since it took me, you know, most of those last two days, uh, I didn't want to start from scratch, so I kept the base video, except I replaced some of the videos with screenshots. So, as some of you probably know, I'm a big fan of the Xenomorph. And, as you also probably know, Prometheus came out about a week ago. So, since that left a lot of questions, I figured I'd explain some of my theories on the matter. Now, I'd like to point out that there will be spoilers, because for me to explain everything that I want to explain, I need to spoil the ending. So, um, I'm expecting that you've seen it, since it's been out for four and a half months. Um, if you haven't, then I'd either recommend that you see it, or if you don't care about spoilers, then just go ahead and keep watching. But I just want to let you know that I do intend to spoil the ending. Now, I'm going to only focus on three primary things throughout the movie, and those are the creation of humans, what the black goop does, and the creation of the xenomorph. Uh, I may touch on other areas as I go along, but these will be the three primary things I touch on. Alright, and then one other thing I want to go over before I start is that these are all just theories, so none of them are actually definitive, they're just what I think would might be true. I'd also like to point out that I'm not going to go off of what the deleted scenes or commentary says, because what the director or producers intend isn't necessarily what happens. Like, for example, in Alien, uh, also directed by Ridley Scott, uh, he intended that a the eggs that house the facehuggers were created by cocooning a human, and that would essentially turn them into an egg. But as we find out in Aliens, they're actually laid by a queen. Um, effectively destroying the idea that the eggs were created by cocooning humans. So I just want to point out that I'm not going to go off of what deleted scenes or anything like that says, because they were deleted, so they don't officially count. So, and it's subject to change in the future. Now, the last thing I need to mention before I get started with my explanation is I will be using clips from Prometheus. That's why I waited until now for it to come out on Blu-ray and DVD to make this video. And Obviously, you're going to find this out in a little bit, so the reason I tell you this is for two reasons. First off, Prometheus is rated R, and I will be using some of the more disturbing scenes from it. So, I wanted to give you a warning about the content this will contain. And the other thing is, I don't own any of the clips. Uh, they're all owned by the uh, makers of it, uh, anyone involved in the production of it, whoever actually owns the clips, though they own them. So, essentially, I don't own any of the clips. All rights reserved. Now to get to the explanation, and I figured I'd start with the creation of humans. Now, according to the movie Prometheus, this the engineers um, drank this black sludge, as you're now seeing, um, which caused his body to disintegrate, breaking apart all the DNA. And by the way, this is an example of the gorier scenes I was talking about. Uh, and then after the DNA broke apart, he fell into the water, the DNA then started to reassemble and form cells, which would eventually become us. Now this, of course, completely destroys any of our theories as to how um, life originated on Earth. Uh, the two primary ones being uh, the one that religions suggest, and then the one that science has researched. Now, I'd like to point out that, yes, I am clumping all religions together, and while they all are different, they do have some general similarities as to how life was created. Uh, if it's monotheistic, it generally suggests that the one all-powerful God created everything, including life on Earth. If it's polytheistic, it generally suggests the same thing, except it was the most powerful God, since there's more than one. And if it's atheistic, it generally suggests that um, everything was created as science would suggest. Um, An atheistic religion is more just a guideline as to how you should live your life. Now, what's interesting about Prometheus is it's actually fairly supportive of the religious theories, Except, instead of a god, it's just a really powerful alien race. Um, and since it's an alien race, they didn't create the universe and all that. Uh, that would have existed, or been formed, as science would suggest. Uh, they just created life on Earth. And any, like, strange religious phenomenon, like bringing people back to life, for example, could be attributed to the uh, 
engineers interacting with humans. Now, I'd like to point out something interesting, which is... How long's it been dead? 2,000 years, give or take. Now, notice that it's 2,000 years ago. And for those of you familiar with Christianity, you'd realize that that was about the time that Jesus was around and all this religious phenomenon was going on. So this would suggest that all the religious phenomenon was more the engineers scouting out, seeing what us humans were up to, and then deciding that they didn't like us anymore, so they were going to launch all that black goof on us and have us be killed. Now, connecting Prometheus with our current scientific theories is much more difficult. They don't fit together as well. Uh, while the engineers are aliens, um, so that means that all our scientific theories as to the formation of the universe and of our planet, they all remain intact, the uh, evolution doesn't. That's been completely destroyed. Now, the issue is, is we've observed evolution happen. So, we know that evolution happens. Now, one theory for this is that the engineers just planted life on Earth, and that it then evolved to form humans. The issue with this is the engineers look a lot like humans. So I find it highly unlikely that um, the cells could then evolve up and eventually form something that looks almost exactly like the engineer. I don't see that evolution half- that just seems too unlikely. Furthermore, um, as you can see here, these are eukaryotic cells. Life started out as prokaryotic cells. Furthermore, you see grass, like in these pictures, the grass and green, obviously, so life didn't start with that seeding. Now, my theory is slightly creationistic, in that the engineers created all general life forms on Earth. Uh, they may have started out life on Earth, or they may have come at some later point. Like, for example, life may have started out on Earth, evolved up into the dinosaurs, where the engineers then came, wiped them out, and then were able to start fresh. Uh, that doesn't actually have to be that, that's just an example. The point is that they came at some point before humans existed, and what I'm suggesting is that they created general life forms. Like, not anything specific, like Darwin's finches, or horses and zebras, but general life forms, like, for example, a finch that then evolved to form different beaks, or a horse that then evolved to form a zebra and all that other stuff. Um, and each of these general life forms probably would have been separate seedings with different animals, and then, for the creation of humans, that probably would have been an engineer itself that would have seeded, you know, that you guys saw. Um, which would have then broken apart and then formed probably like early humans, which then evolved up to form Homo sapiens. So, that's what I think happened for the creation of humans. But now we're going to move on to the, what the black goop does. I'd like to point out that there are probably two different types of black goop. Because the black goop that the engineer drinks to form us humans is thousands of years older than the black goop found in LB-223. Furthermore, LB-223 is like an experimental military base, so that black goop is more of a weapon than the black goop that the engineer drank to form us humans. Nevertheless, what we know about the black goop is that whatever it comes in contact with, it will break apart its DNA and then reform it to create a slightly different creature. Now, I'm going to suggest that the black goop that the engineer drank to form us is um, more older, and what it does is it breaks apart the DNA and then reassembles it to form a slightly smaller and weaker version. So it's more just used for like creating, or perhaps it's just an older, uh, not as well developed one, so it can only like create a slightly devolved creature. Now, the black goop found in LB223 is more militarized. It's designed to create uh, a new, different creature, but it's more angry and hostile, such as these worms, which then get covered in the black goop, uh, which then become these things, uh, and then Fifield, which gets his face covered in the black goop, and then does this. Now, it's also quite likely that the militarized black goop makes the creatures extreme regenerate extremely fast. Because with the worm, you see that here its head is cut off, but it's back now. Uh, and with Fifield, he, you know, takes a few bullets and gets burned a little before he succumbs. It's also quite likely that the militarized black goop causes the creatures to have acidic blood. Because the xenomorph, as we all know, has acidic blood, and I'll get to its 
I'll get more in depth on its creation next, but it was created from the black goop. Uh, and then this one thing, as you can see, does have acidic blood. I mean, that's obviously acid. So I just can't think that this would just happen to occur in these two creatures. It seems to just unlikely to randomly happen, so it must have been planned. Furthermore, there's nothing to suggest that Fifield doesn't have acid blood. I mean, while we don't show him having acid blood, there's nothing to say that he doesn't. There's no evidence against it. Another interesting thing about the black goop is that the canisters only seem to release it when exposed to water vapor. Now, the reason I suggest this is just before the door opens, the canisters are all normal, but as they get in there and the water vapor gets in there, the canisters start to release the black goop. And you notice earlier that there was water dripping from the ceiling, so there would be water vapor in the air. Now, the reason I suggest this, and not that they don't release it while they're cold, because we do see David, you know, taking the canister out of the fridge, or freezer, or whatever it was, is because there's nothing to suggest that, that the room was cold. I mean, you don't see the breath, so it doesn't seem like it's a, a cold room. They don't mention it at all, so it just doesn't seem like that room is cold. Uh, furthermore, David covers the canister with air, um, and then puts it in the fridge. Both of these things would just be used to keep water vapor off of it, because, you know, air would keep water vapor off of it, and then in the fridge, you know, water vapor wouldn't be able to get to it, because it would all solidify. Now we're going to move on to what is probably my favorite part, the creation of the Xenomorph. Now, for the creation of the Xenomorph, David takes the black goop and spikes Holloway's drink, which Holloway then consumes, and then, at some later point, Holloway and Shaw do this. Now, we know that when a human comes into contact with the black goop, this happens. And while Holloway did come into contact with a lot less than Fifield, Holloway drank it, so it got throughout its bloodstream and was able to affect him more effectively, while Fifield just came into contact with his face, it just touched his skin, so, while it was more, it wouldn't have affected him as effectively. Now, Shaw is sterile, meaning she can't become pregnant, at least not with a human baby. So, because of this, when Holloway and Shaw have intercourse, the goop-infected sperm cells just sit in the womb. They don't, like, do the normal process of making a baby. If they did the normal process of making a baby, what would have probably happened is a baby would have been formed, and but it would be like Holloway and Firefield. It would be like what happened to them. But since a baby can't be formed, the sperm cells would just sit in the womb, and since they're affected by the black goop, they would have begun to modify, and then, you know, form this thing that comes out of Shaw. And the reason I went with this kind of disturbing sperm cell theory is because if you know what a sperm cell is, and I'm not going to show a picture of that, that's where I draw the line, you'll know that they have relative similarities. Now, this thing that came out of Shaw is essentially the first facehugger, which, given my theories as to where it came from, it makes kind of sense that it impregnates people. But nevertheless, it goes up, becomes much bigger, and then, near the end of the movie, when the engineer comes into contact with it, we see that it is tan, has eight legs now, and can impregnate people. Um, it's much larger, and has these things, but it still has some clear similarities to the traditional facehugger. It'll need to go through a little bit of evolution, but this is definitely the first version of the facehugger. Now, at the very end of the movie, we have this wonderful, glorious scene. clearly the first Xenomorph. While, like the first facehugger in this movie, it'll need to go through some evolution to become the traditional version, it is still very clearly the first version of the Xenomorph. I'd also like to point out that notice how the Xen- or the engineers wear, have this kind of ribbed armor, similar to how the Xenomorph have kind of a ribbed exoskeleton. So my guess is that the engineer's armor connects to them on a biological level, so that when this first xenomorph came out of the engineer, 
the armor uh, was part of the DNA that affected the Xenomorph. Now, a couple interesting things will result from this movie. First off, since this shows the beginning of the Xenomorph at the end of the year of 2093, it completely destroys the AVP series, which took place in 2004. And the reason I'm going with this instead of the AVP series, because AVP did take place first, is because Prometheus is part of the main Alien series, whereas AVP is just a spin-off, so Prometheus is more trustworthy. Secondly, uh, this explains why the host affects the Xenomorph so much. Um, and what I mean by this is, this explains why the different DNA has such an impact on the Xenomorph. But yeah, that's about it. I've explained everything I wanted to explain. I hope I didn't offend you. If I did, I'd like to point out that these are just theories for a movie. But nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something, and see ya!